This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to put Satan under his feet, messing with my technology. <laughs> but it's all good. Anybody just glad to, to say that I'm still in the land of the living. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless your name. You may be seated. We're going to jump right into this word this morning. Amen. <laughs> I'm excited for what God has to say to us today. One of the reasons why I'm so excited, Miss Ebola, because I had to press my way. Because I had to push. I had to climb. And I'm still climbing. Anybody out there still climbing? Anybody out there still pushing? Anybody out there still pressing their way on today? And guess what? You're doing it. You're making it. Amen. So today, I want to talk about... Um, no pain, no gain. Uh -huh. And you know, ain't nothing like when you done experienced it for yourself. All right, amen, amen. So anyway, I got a little visual for you to think about as I share these nuggets of impartation with you this morning. Amen? Amen. Good morning to everyone out there on Facebook that has joined us this morning. We're excited to have you in the house today. We're excited for you to just get engaged and hear what the Lord is going to do in this house on today. So I'm going to give quick shout outs real quick and then I'm going to jump right into this word. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Mama Joan. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Carrie we see you, we see you. And for those of you that have not joined us, come on in the room, take a seat. Come get fed, come have breakfast with us, amen? All right, so my topic today, no pain, no gain. What motivates you to make change, changes in your life? Think about it. Think about a time when you made a change in your life and asked the question, what motivated me to make that change? Just think about it for a moment. What motivated you to make a change in your life? Something had to motivate you, amen? See, I've always been interested in what motivates people to make changes in their lives. So for a nugget of impartation today, I did a little research on the topic what I discovered across the board was basically the same thing that motivates people. The greatest motivator in taking action to bring about change is pain. Amen. Pain will motivate you to change. Maybe you still don't get it, you don't understand. Anybody out there been motivated by pain? Just do a thumbs up. Just do a thumbs up on Facebook too, in the room also, amen. <laughs> See, let me give you a couple tangible examples. If I have hunger pains, I'm motivated to find something to eat. How about you? Just give me a thumbs up. If I'm experiencing the pain of no money, now I got two choices. I can either steal it or I can go get a job, but I'm motivated if I have no money, amen? If I experience enough physical pain, and some of us, you know, we have tried to self-motivate, self-doctor uh, ourselves, be our own doctor, but if that pain gets so bad that you can't handle it, then you are motivated to go see a physician. Amen? Amen. If I'm in a situation that is painful, I seek ways to first, you know, we try to rectify it, we try to reconcile it. We try to come up with our own remedy. Yeah. But if that pain is so great and that situation is not getting in the better, some of us just choose to get out of it. Amen? It could be a marriage. It could be a relationship. It could be a mother-son. Sometimes you got to say, look, you go over here and I'm going to go over there because why? You want to get out of that pain. You're motivated. See, pain, though it's unpleasant, it's a strong motivator and can be a call to action. Pain, no pain, no gain. You know better, right? That was one of my old singers in Mississippi. Go tell Mr. Child. I am. Okay. 
I am truly a, a Betty Wright fan. I know every last one of her songs. I can sing them to the core. And I love singing to Pastor Walker. Oh, Don't you. blame Mr. Charlie. Mr. Charlie is just a man. And he is doing the best that he can. Amen. All right, I have to get that little side note in there. But if you have not listened to Betty Wright and you like the blues, please listen to Betty Wright. But back to my story. No pain, no gain. Think about a bodybuilder. Their motto is no pain, no gain. Bodybuilders accept the fact that to build up their bodies, they must first endure the pain of what? Of working out. Mm -hmm. If they're gonna build up their body, you're gonna have to work out. But sometimes you gotta tear down the muscle tissue that, and then rebuild it again so that you come back stronger yeah. and stronger yeah. and stronger. They have to endure some pain. Yeah. Amen. When you are in the spiritual development process, you have to learn to press through the workout to get the benefits physically. The same principle applies to spiritual fitness. Do you want stronger spiritual muscles? Huh? Do you want stronger spiritual muscles? Yeah. If your answer is yes, then you need to endure the painful workout for a season and, step and accept it as a part of spiritual body building. Yeah. No pain, no gain. Some of you may ask the question, is pain and suffering normal? You may have thought it was something you were supposed to avoid at all costs. We all try to avoid pain and suffering. And sometimes you wonder, am I going through all of this for a reason? When am I ever going to get to that reason? What keeps pushing me back in all this pain and suffering? I eat right. I do right. I respect everybody. I'm nice to people. I show up at work on time. I go to church. But I still feel like I'm just in this big pillar of pain and suffering. All right. So I want you to turn with me, if you would, with your Bibles, to James 1 and 2. James 1 and 2. Let's turn together. <clears throat> Is pain and suffering normal? Thank you, Danielle. James 1 and 2. Amen. All right, let's 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 read this right here. Let's, let's hear what it has to say. James 1 and 2 says, Consider it pure joy, my brother, yeah. my sister. Yeah. When you face trials, when you face tests of many kinds, right. that lets you know right there many tests are going to come to your life as long as you are on this earth. Because you know that the testing of your faith yeah. develops perseverance. Mm -hmm. All right. Helps you endure. Yeah. Perseverance must, that's the key word right here, must finish its work yeah. so that you may be mature and complete, Thanks. not lacking mm -hmm. anything. That's good. If you want the spiritual muscles, if you want to grow in God, if you want a deeper relationship, if you want to stop trying to solve the problems of this world, you're going to have to develop some spiritual muscles. See, now sometimes the test can be really, really, really trying, like this morning for me. And we know that we go through seasons when sometimes this test is, is so much more trying than other tests. It seems like it just keeps picking up the pace. And we find it difficult to have joy during those times. It's hard to have joy when you're in pain. And the test, ladies and gentlemen, is always, always, this is what I want you to get and understand about the test and the trials in your life. The test is always whether or not we're going to be obedient to God and trust that his word is true. That's the test. That's the test. Are you going to be obedient to God in your trials and your tribulations, in your pain and in your discomfort, and still hold on to the word of God? All right. We must remember that hard times are going to come from living in this fallen world that we're in. But God has promised to help us through. Yeah. 
Yeah. Therefore, we should not blame God for evil because he has no part in it. He said he is not the author of confusion. Yeah. But trials are going to come. So I'm going to give you three nuggets on how to gain through your pain. Anybody want to gain through your pain? You want to know I'm going up a little bit higher? Amen. Amen. So three nuggets of impartation on how to gain through your pain. Amen? Amen. Number one, the path of pain with Christ in our life always leads to personal gain. It's better to be with him than without him. Amen. Why? Because you're no longer trusting in what you can do, but what you can do through him. Amen? That's nugget number one. Nugget number two, get a new perspective. Get a new perspective right. on pain and suffering. Can you see it as a spiritual workout? Can you see maybe I'm going through these issues of life because God knows that I can handle it? I may not understand it all. It may not feel good, but he said he would never put more on you nor me than what we can bear. All right. Can you see it as a spiritual workout? Can you see just when your money is acting funny that it's an opportunity to see if I'm going to go in doom and gloom and depression or am I going to take the challenge right. and say, God, show me. Show me how to stretch these two nipples so I can get a whole dime. Show me, God, how to handle all these things going on with COVID-19 where I'm not sitting over here saying, whoa, it's me. Right. It's a spiritual workout. No pain, Amen. no gain. See, right. God wants us to run to him, not from him. But in order to run to him, you got to pass some of these tears. Amen. Amen. You got to pass some of these trials. You got to stop this Amen. moping around here, acting like everybody is against you, then for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, get a new perspective Amen. on your pain and suffering. You know, when things start happening to me and Pastor Life, we don't put our lips on it too much more anymore. But we sure know how, know how to get on our knees. I get quiet. If you can't get on your knees, get quiet. All right. Don't get an enemy something else to play with. Amen? Can you see it as a spiritual workout? Number three. And I'm, consider trials. I love this part. Consider trials a test of your faith. The word tells us that our faith is much more valuable than gold. So hold on to it. A lot of people need to hear this truth today. Your faith, your faith is much more valuable than gold. Right. Your faith. That's what the word says. So let's let's look at a scripture to wrap this up. First Peter 6. And we're going to go through verse 9. 6 through 9. Amen. Six through nine. Good morning, all of you who've just joined us. It says, in all this, you greatly rejoice. Though now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. Grief and all kinds of tests. But look at verse seven. It says, these trials have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, your faith is of greater worth than gold, which perishes. See, this gold, it's going to go away. But your faith can still stand. Your right. faith must be refined. Your faith must go through the refiner's fire so that it will result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Yes. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Yes. It's nothing like some Jesus joy. Mm -hmm. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. What is this saying? It's saying we have a heavenly inheritance. Mm -hmm. But it's based on our faith, not what we acquire here on this earth. So as your faith continues to strengthen, you begin to look at your trials and your tribulations a little bit different. 
you realize that God still got your back. That God is still for you. You realize that these trials and tests is pulling and pushing something great out of you. Because you got a heavenly inheritance. You're not worried about the things of this world. Because the word said that heaven and earth will pass away. But God's word will still remain. The word tells us seek what's above and not what's on this earth. Why? Because God wants us to look past the trials, look past the tribulation, and still see him. Still rely on him. Amen. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. We got to work these spiritual muscles. We got to stop giving up in the fight because it get hard or uncomfortable or the unknown. We got to stop giving up. Stop quit. Some of you are almost at the finish line. Some of you are just about crossed over. Guess what you did? Quit. Because the pain got so great and your muscles were so weak that you were depending on the physical versus the spiritual. But guess what? God says you can still get back in the game. Amen. No pain. Okay.